Well, if it is more healthcare providers listening to this, it is like you don't need to tell your runners to stop running. And they don't want to hear that. And they actually heal better when you don't do that. So if you can, you know, either partner with a good running coach or educate yourself on the training of actually running and realizing that you can keep someone running so they can be able to heal from their injury, you're going to see your results like tenfold. And it, it, this is coming from someone who's done all the manual therapy certifications and courses and all of that. And I'm a true believer in manual therapy. Don't get me wrong, but I don't do any now. And my results are actually better in terms of my outcomes with my patients because I have full autonomy, support, control over like what they're doing for training. So blending that aspect with, you know, the, our PT brain and like injury aspect yeah. to me has been like game changing. Feels like we're doing like a home renovation show with that introduction there. <laughs> uh, PT business blueprint, Dwayne, welcome back to the podcast. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me on. It's always great to connect with you and chat. All right. So because I know you outside of the podcast, um, you've got some different things going on besides just being a practice owner. So give people like the back of the baseball card about Dwayne and what you do and all the different things that you touch or maybe have touched in the past. Um, yeah. So I guess the um, short story is really most recently have taken kind of my passion for running and education and just really channeled that toward educating the running community that they don't need to stop running in order to get over a running injury. And I really created a kind of one-on-one -on -one coaching program, kind of provide weekly videos, podcast episodes, um, and really built a holistic kind of healthy runner coaching team that really empowers runners to get stronger, run faster, and enjoy lifelong injury-free running. And I am like super passionate about like anyone can run and that runners should actually be treated differently when recovering from an injury than just Joe Schmo, who is not kind of an adult runner. And I'm just honestly like really on a mission to change the traditional thinking that running causes injuries and your body is just not meant to run or you must take a break in order to get better. Um, so I've definitely learned a lot in my personal running journey. And now I've really kind of combined those passions with my kind of history for, you know, sports medicine, orthopedics, um, teaching, and really channeled that to toward the running community. Perfect. And then you've also done some teaching and some education. Yes. Yeah. So um, it's full-time faculty um, for eight years. I actually just recently this past uh, spring stepped down from that position in order to really embrace myself full-time in really what I'm most passionate about now and just being able to have a larger impact um, and be able to share my experiences, my expertise in this area, not only with a room full of DPT students um, or a one-on-one -on -one patient like in the traditional clinic sense, but the larger, greater running community. So what's this look like? Is this 100% online Is there, or is there an in-person location? Like what's Spark look like? Yeah, hundred percent online. Um, initially okay. I did have a in-person location, um, here in Connecticut and, you know, once the pandemic hit, you know, like most things, um, I really, at the time I already had a podcast, a uh, YouTube channel and Facebook group, and just kind of, you know, put all, put all the eggs in that basket, so to speak, and, you know, stop really treating patients more on kind of a session to session basis, and then sure. really embraced providing a service and really meeting the runner like where their problem areas are and i created a solution to be able to overcome you know their main challenges so you don't actually have to be in person to de to deliver something that is of value who knew who knew well we dude, knew dude mind, mind blowing, mind -blowing. <laughs> I yeah. know, but the funny part is you were doing it when, a, when not many people were doing it, right? Which is like making this change and people fear change. They're like, that's not going to work. There was a great, I forget one of Adam Sandler's like comedy albums. He did this bit where I think he played like his mom, like this character's mom. And whatever he was saying, she would just yell from off camera or off mic. They're all going to laugh at you. And I can hear that. It's like, they're all going to laugh at you. And they will. First, they're going to laugh at you and they're going to doubt you and they're going to mock you. And then when you do the thing, they're going to say that they were there the whole time. That's just, that's just how it is, is that's just how human nature is. We 
project our own fears or other people project their fears onto us if we start doing something a different way and they'll say you'll never make it that way because someone if if it was going to work someone would have done it already which is just really bad thinking um yeah somebody would have done it already if that was going to be the way and then now here you are so let's talk about this like what is what is on the menu for spark healthy runner if someone comes to your website, sees your content, whatever, they, they, they fall down that funnel in a good way. They slide down that funnel in a good way. And now they're like, okay, I feel like you're the right person to help me do the things that I want to do. What's like on the menu? Like what's it look like when someone gets there and what do they have to choose from? Yeah, so we definitely have a lot of free resources out there, right? To just be able to help anyone in the running community. And that's, again, I'm really passionate about education. So you know, that's, that's one avenue, but to work with us and our services, you know, my signature kind of spark back, um, one-on-one coaching program in which someone works with me, it is really providing a unique service that is integrative in nature where I'm utilizing my knowledge and experience as a musculoskeletal content expert, running expertise, strength and conditioning and run coaching. And that's a 16 week program where I'm taking them through like four different phases they're kind of restoring their body back to fundamental running movement patterns, and then they're rebuilding their body. So like the restore phase is like what most PTs do, right? In a traditional PT clinic, you're going to evaluate right. them, your movement assessment, you're going to be like, okay, yeah, your ankle is, you know, limited mobility, and that's contributing to your plantar fasciitis or your Achilles tendinopathy. Um, so that's kind of like the eval assessment part. And we're really good as PTs at getting people out of pain, right? So I've done that for 21 plus years now and have a lot of experience doing that. I think the part that is missed in most traditional practices is, right, we all hate insurance and all that. And, you know, once someone's out of pain and quite frankly, the public think once they're out of pain, they're good to go. They could just go back to doing whatever training errors, essentially, uh, which are the most common reasons why runners get injured to begin with. Um, and then they're coming back in your clinic every six months. So I really got frustrated with that model, right? And not right. being able to provide the bridge to get someone to actually running healthy in their 40s, 50s and beyond. So that's where we kind of rebuild. We go through strength training specific for runners. And I provide that with full sport accountability um, and then the retraining part. So using my knowledge and expertise as a running coach and, you know, building plans for, you know, thousands of runners at this point, really taking someone through where they're at in their running journey and being able to program their half marathon training plan or being able to run Philly next weekend of the client that I just met with before and going over his race day strategy, right? So that's kind of like the retrain portion and really getting someone to, you know, crush their running goal and do it where they're not getting injured and they're actually having the confidence and now they got the tools in their toolbox to be able to implement this with future training. So yeah. that's a, the, the one-on-one -on -one program, but then we also have um, continuity programs for someone who is currently healthy and maybe they've been out of running for 10 years, they had kids, now they're getting back into running and they're like, you know what, I wanna get that running part of my life back but they're like, I'm pretty healthy. I don't have any injuries. I just need some guidance. I don't know where to start. I need the structure. That's where we have a team of coaches that work, you know, under the same kind of philosophy that I work under. And I serve as more kind of the consultant on the team that if someone does wind up having some IT band pain, you know, during their training, then I can, you know, add that input where the three of us kind of hop on a call and be able to manage the run plan. Maybe we add these two exercises and if someone needs to be referred out, then, hey, this I've seen this, you know, before, let's get you to see a local, you know, running PT in your area. So yeah. that's kind of the one on one coaching services with someone on our team. About how many runners are you working with at any given time, like through all like, these two different sort of spheres ballparking for me? Yeah, so um, about 60 to 70 through our one-on-one -on -one services. Um, and then we also do run like twice a year a group, you know, coaching program, which is more a little bit scaled. And we have Coach Latoya, who's like amazing at that. And we do have a pretty strong presence locally in Connecticut where we do, you know, once a week group long runs together. Um, and then the latest um, thing is because, yeah, like my time is limited, right? I'm limited on how many people that I can help one-on-one. -on -one. And to be able to scale now, 
um, have created Healthy Runner Academy, which is a membership option where, you know, we have our 20 founding members going through that right now. And then I'm excited for the full launch of the whole membership site and everything happening uh, in 2025. Uh, here's a question for you. Do you want to boost your clinic revenue by $290 per patient per quarter? Of course you do. That's rhetorical. Physiotech's remote therapeutic monitoring can help you do that. Enhance patient outcomes, ease provider workload, and turbocharge your earnings. Kickstart with RTM at physiotech.ca. That's physiotec.ca. And the thing you interact with the most at your clinic, if you're a therapist, like it or not, is your EMR. MW Therapy's all-in-one outpatient PT EMR gives you seamless integration of patient portals, marketing automations, and billing, all at one unbelievable value. Switching over is a breeze too. Kick the tires, take a test drive at mwtherapy.com. And where is your PT career going? It's not rhetorical, it's literal. Embark on extraordinary patient care adventures with Jackson Therapy Partners. Visit them at jacksontherapy.com. This is perfect for physical therapists eager to make their mark. To do what you want to do, where you want to do it. Discover where your career can take you at jacksontherapy.com. Who, who's going through that? People like practitioners, like like coaches, PTs, trained, like who, who's going yeah. through that? So this is going to be for really anyone who either has been a client of ours before and they're just like, you know what, I, I don't feel like I need the one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore or financial reasons they can't do it, um, but they still want access to me and they still want some structure in how to grow in the six steps of growing as a runner, whether it is mindset, strength training, run plan, nutrition, recovery, or race day strategy. So th those are really the principles that we cover in there. Or it could be someone who's like, you know what, I, I really can't make the investment to work with Dwayne. And you know what, I got a good, you know, local running PT, but I could use his expertise and his coaching team's expertise from like the programming side of things. And you know what, I've been doing the free, you know, Hal Higdon plan off the internet for years, and I'm still getting injured every time I train for a marathon, right? Like, right. So that person or someone who's currently working with a one-on-one -on -one run coach and they're like, I love my coach, you know, everything's going great with them. I'm not injured, but I still want to work on how, you know, what are the best mobility exercises for runners? What are the best, you know, strength exercises that I really need to be focusing on? So you're going to get that expertise that has been helpful for, you know, the runners that I've helped throughout my career. That's great. So it's a digital, like sort of a digital product people can, people can consume and, and, and join with. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yours is a different model. So I don't ask this of everybody, but like technology, what sort of things do you utilize? You don't have to go terribly deep, but like, do you use anything like motion capture if, since you're seeing people from afar? Is there, what, what do you use? Because I love asking PTs this because there is the flashy will buy any, like some people will buy anything. PTs are pretty practical. They're like, if I'm going to use it every day, I'll get it. If not, I'm going to use my eyes or going to, I'm going to use the stuff that's just like hammer and nails, man. So what's your hammer and nails technology that you couldn't live without? Yeah, no, great question. So I don't have any fancy uh, motion capture software or anything to that effect. I have all of my runners, you know, take videos. I give them instructions on how to take videos literally with their phone. Um, they upload them. We're going to analyze their gait and be able to go over like running form, things of that nature. All of like our one-on-one -on -one clients, I'm going to take them through a live movement assessment. So it's literally Google Meet um, that I use just because yep. I use the Google Suite platform um, for everything. So same as Zoom, essentially. Um, yeah, besides that. Um, and cool. yeah, that's... And the reason, really, the reason uh, I know, wanted to ask that and bring that up is I think a lot of people think that there's a huge technological investment that needs to be made first. You've got to jump in with 20 grand versus uh, 20 grand worth of tech. And most of the time it goes unused. Most of the time it really is simple. Like, a, you know, I mean, and these cameras on these, the, 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 the newest iPhones, I mean, they're pretty baller. Like you're going to get some really great video. You can have a couple of apps to slow down things or maybe freeze frame or go back and forth and jog, but you don't need to have a video suite to do that anymore. You've got some off the shelf things that allow you to stop and, uh, and cut up video. Yeah, no, you can definitely get started with, you know, literally at the beginning, you know, some of my coaches were using the free version of Zoom and it's like, it cuts you off at 45 minutes uh, of, a, of a call, but then you just hop back really on, efficient. Uh, right? Like you could, 
yes, you definitely do not need a lot of tech. Like literally I started my online business using Google suite and yes, we use, you know, final surge as like a training platform, which is a great, you know, in terms yep. of like seeing everyone's training and being able to communicate through there or communicate through WhatsApp. Um, that's what really, honestly, all you need. Um, you don't yeah. need any, anything fancy and obviously upgrading if you're creating content then upgrading you know your camera your microphone all of that has happened gradually over time um yeah. you know you make the investment but honestly it's better to invest in actually uh a coaching business program to actually grow in your business journey if you're a pt okay. uh because we didn't get that right we didn't get any of that education so yeah. that would be the best investment versus investing in some fancy software or motion capture system to, you know, be able to see something that you're already assessing with your eyes anyway, to get the exact degree. Um, the runner doesn't care, right? If yeah, <laughs> they are not they getting, result, man. don't sell the drill, sell the hole that the drill makes, sell the hole in the wall. The reason you buy a drill is you want to hang a picture or you want to build a house, whatever. Let me ask you this, two of the biggest problems, one of them being patient or client acquisition. How do you go about solving that? What are some what are some ways that people are finding you? You mentioned creating content, which is one great way. I advocate for it. It should not be your only strategy. How are people finding you and making sure that they you're finding the right people and that they wind up working with you? Listen, if you're running a PT practice and you're still using old school systems, you're leaving time and you're leaving money on the table. Empower EMR is here to change that. It's an all-in-one automated and built to streamline your scheduling, billing, and everything else so you can focus on what you do best, help with patience. Don't overthink it. Go to empoweremr.com. That's empoweremr.com. Book a demo and stop letting outdated tech hold you back. All right, PTs, if you're serious about crushing the OCS exam or leveling up your clinical game, current concepts of orthopedic physical therapy, fifth edition, is where it's at. This is your one-stop shop for the latest in ortho PT with expert insights on every joint, real-world case scenarios, and evidence-backed techniques. Don't sleep on this. Go to orthopt.org right now and get a sneak peek and start prepping like a pro. That's orthopt.org. One more time, orthopt.org. Go there. Yeah, so I have yet to actually do paid advertising. I've done zero really? paid advertising um, in growing my business. Initially, it was um, organic social media, right? In you know five or six years ago, Facebook, Facebook groups, Instagram was pretty much where we got all of our leads. Wow, um, good for you. Then the podcast, you know, took off, and especially like after the pandemic. Um, 100% of my leads were coming from that. And now in the last year, Jimmy, actually, and this is like a good lesson to learn as well, is sometimes things take time, right? And you want to think about creating evergreen content that will still be lasting in five years, 10 years, 15 years from now. Like I just actually um, shot an episode on kind of best running shoes for Achilles tendinopathy. And I did it not, you know, saying the Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 is like a really good show if you have, because the shoes change every single year. Every but I year. taught the four principles, the things to you could test on a shoe that will hold true, whether it's, you know, five years from now, 10 years, 20 years from now. Um, so the YouTube channel has actually been a huge driver um, in leads in this past year where people are Googling, right? How to get over posterior tibial tendinitis or Achilles tendinopathy, they're finding my videos, finding the content, and then they go down kind of that rabbit hole. And then they wind up hearing about our services and give me a call to work together. It's wild, isn't it? I mean, I think even even just that mindset shift of what is or what is evergreen content mean? It means it's not going to expire. You don't have to keep it in the fridge. It means it's not going to get outdated in a year. And now that's not to say that sometimes you want to create that, right? Because now you could actually create a great video the best shoes for 2025 because you reviewed the you know the, the the 10 the 10 biggest brands and you're saying this is 2025 but the example of the best shoe for posterior uh, you know any any condition Achilles tendonitis that could be evergreen content it's really it's 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 where you start with that content that can define where it goes and neither is better nor worse they're just they're just different tools yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's important to know because we can get in the trap of chasing fads 
and or trying to figure out algorithms and find out where the best platform is and this and that and you know whether or not you're doubling down on reels or you're using chat gpt or you right like you can spend so much time trying to like teach yourself specific principles and trying to yep. chase these fads but if you really it boils down to you know finding out who your audience is how you can serve them speak to them speak to their problems their wishes right their frustrations right. and offer a solution for that um no matter and, how you deliver that if you put it in a way that people are going to be able to find it um organically then you know it's going to build and then obviously for clients who have been through our program like once they're kind of in the system right then you know we do find that whether it's working with me and now they're start working with one of our coaches on our team or you know they sign up like the initial 20 founding members 17 out of 20 of them were previous clients of ours right yeah. so yeah, yeah. overserve uh we're keeping these episodes under 20 minutes so i got three more questions one's a parting shot you've done that before so i'll be last one is what is the thing that was really and how am i going to say this what was the biggest challenge that you faced so far in doing this business however you were doing it and how'd you overcome it biggest challenge how'd you overcome it it was for me being an old old timer pt right 20 plus years um it was getting out of the mindset that you know i was used to hey man i worked over a decade in traditional practice insurance model and you know I, i'm not worth that that money i'm not worth asking someone for money and just getting out of that mindset and shifting it toward seeing the results that I was, you know, getting for people that, you know, this guy Tim that I just met with, he's going to run his first marathon in 16 years. Like after kids, after losing his mom, like all of these wise like he's gotten this part of his life back and it's like an active yeah. lifestyle now that he loves. So just like being able to change people's lives and realize that that is what you're doing. So, you know, getting out of it just the mindset shift of, you know, having someone you know pay you money to actually um provide a service that's going to really be life changing that was like that the biggest end. challenge to get story. over sell the finish line right sell with that feeling now how about let's go to the flip side that was your biggest challenge what's been the most rewarding part of your journey doing this business and creating this yeah it's been you know i, I always like a challenge so in life it was like going back to school getting you know academic phd um you know whatever challenge it was and meeting that milestone like clinically i i was always there so this has just been really um rewarding to really start it from scratch and and you know build it to where we have 16 members and that i'm helping to change their lives as well and mentoring them and um just being able to have like the impact within the running community even when i get like messages from people i'm sure you get it from your podcast right from people across the globe that you've yeah, never met cool. you've never but they'll they'll tell you like how much your podcast or you know your videos have changed their lives so just being able to have cool. that larger impact um has been super rewarding yeah last thing we do on the episode is parting shot what's just your last you know soapbox statement mic drop moment quote something that comes to mind you want to leave with the audience Well, if it is more healthcare providers listening to this, it is like you don't need to tell your runners to stop running. And they don't want to hear that and they actually heal better when you don't do that. So if you can, you know, either partner with a good running coach or educate yourself on the training of actually running and realizing that you can keep someone running so they can be able to heal from their injury, um you're going to see your results like tenfold and it, it, this is coming from someone who's done all the manual therapy certifications and courses and all of that and I'm a true believer in manual therapy don't get me wrong but I don't do any now and my results are actually better in terms of my outcomes with my patients because I have full autonomy support control over like what they're doing for training so blending that aspect with you know the our PT brain and like injury aspect yeah. to me has been like game changing love that. All right. Uh let everybody know where they can find you in case they wanted to pick your brain. Like where where would you send a, a colleague to uh to to connect with you? Yeah, the main website sparkhealthyrunner.com. Um we got the Healthy Runner podcast. Um so when is a runner, they're interested in running. We got tons of episode content that they would love there as well as Spark Healthy Runner YouTube channel. Love it. Dwayne, appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for uh thanks for jumping in on this PT blueprint thing that I'm trying to do over the next couple of years. Yeah, man. I love it. Thanks for having me.